A few days ago, as of the time I'm making this video, the Odysseus lander by Intuitive Machine successfully landed on the moon, albeit after rolling over on its side. This is not only the first American moon landing in 52 years, but is extremely important for several reasons. One being that this is the first successful moon landing by a company, not a country. The IM-1 mission has shown that non-government agencies can successfully land on the surface of the moon, unlike the failed missions that came before it, Peregrine 1 and Hakuto R. It opens up a whole list of possibilities for new private missions to the moon, and that was exactly the point of this mission. IM-1 was the second landing attempt of NASA's CLPS program, which stands for Commercial Lunar Payload Services. This program aimed to give certain companies funding to develop lunar landers for NASA, enabling better exploration of the moon in preparation for the Artemis moon landings that will hopefully launch before the year 2030. Because CLPS is a part of Artemis, this makes IM-1 technically the first lunar landing of the Artemis program, which aims to create a permanent base on the moon. IM-1 is more than America's return to the moon, it's the first step of putting humans back there to stay. CLPS has been one of the most criticized parts of the Artemis program, mainly because many people think we shouldn't be relying on companies who have never landed on the moon before to land valuable NASA experiments there. While it has been off to a rocky start, especially with the failure of Peregrine 1, it could end up becoming a very important part of the Artemis program. So, if IM-1 is just a taste of what's to come, then what happens next? Well, the data for IM-1 will be extremely useful to the development of SpaceX's human landing system. The lander used a Methalox-fueled engine, which has never been tested in space before until now. The HLS will also be using Methalox, so data on how IM-1 functioned will be critical to HLS development and putting humans back on the moon. This mission will also pave the way for IM-2, which will be similar to IM-1 but feature a drill to directly search for ice on the moon necessary for the development of a base. Using knowledge from IM-1 and 2, NASA will launch the Viper rover to the lunar south pole, which will further search for water ice. As well as this, multiple other CLPS missions are planned, which will cement the United States' presence on the moon for many years to come. Blue Ghost 1 will should also be launching in 2024, with IM-3 in 2025 and Blue Ghost 2 in 2026. But while we're doing this, China is increasing their presence on the moon as well with their Chang'e program, which is doing experiments on the moon to eventually allow for China to send people to the moon before the year 2030. The US and China are both preparing for the construction of permanent bases on the moon, and IM-1 has finally shown that the US is still in this new space race, and we are committed to it. I've already made other videos about lunar colonization and why it would be well worth the risks, link to the playlist in the description. But IM-1 is just the beginning of a huge plan to send humans back to the moon, to stay, and it's about time. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed, check out my other videos about space colonization.